There are so many Fujifilm X system camera bodies and you're just not sure which one to choose. Let me tell you why I went with Fujifilm X-T4 and later you will maybe know if you should go with the X-T4 too or if you should choose a different X system camera body. First of all, for anyone that doesn't know what the Fujifilm X system is, it's an APS-C cropped sensor camera system which is the sensor size below the full frame and above micro four thirds. Contrary to a lot of other manufacturers, Fujifilm actually focuses on their cropped sensor camera system as they don't just see as an entry-level camera system but as a system for anyone, beginner or professional. They also have a medium format camera system which has a even bigger sensor than full frame cameras but that's also going to cost you a whole lot more money. As far as I know the only crop sensor camera system that actually competes with Fujifilm is that from Sony. Um, that doesn't mean other manufacturers also have these crop sensor camera systems but I feel like they just don't focus that much on it. Fujifilm and Sony both have a significant amount more lenses in their lens lineup. Anyway, this video isn't about APS-C camera systems, but about why I chose the Fujifilm X-T4 from all these great Fujifilm camera bodies that are out there. Just preface, I bought the Fujifilm X-T4 in 2021. So after that, there were a couple of more camera bodies that were released and obviously I didn't take them into consideration when buying my camera. But later, I will also touch on those newer camera bodies and you why I would or would not upgrade to them. Firstly, there are three different kinds of camera bodies that Fujifilm X system has to offer. First one being with a PASN dial. It's more of a modern camera look, it doesn't really have this Fuji-esque styling and also has way bigger grips than the other two camera bodies. So there's the entry level line which would be the XS10 and the XS20 and then there's also the more professional top of line products which would be the XH1 and the XH2 and 2S. Secondly, there are the rangefinder style bodies. The unique thing about them is that they have the EVF or also OVF on the left side of the camera body instead of the middle like all the other cameras basically. These camera bodies usually look sleeker than other camera bodies that's first of all due to the flat top because you don't have the EVF in the middle like the notch on top. Also they usually have very minimal grip sometimes even no grip. These camera bodies are usually used by street photographers I feel like and that's because they just don't want to attract that much attention. Also these camera bodies have individual dials on top for shutter speed and ISO in contrast to the more modern approach of the PASM dial and the entry level line for these cameras would be the XE3 and 4 and then you also have the Pro model which naturally has the name Pro in it which would be the X-Pro3 right now. On the topic of range finest style cameras there's also the probably most famous camera from Fujifilm which would be the X100V and F and T and X100 whatever. But these camera bodies are great but just not what I was looking for because as a first camera body I definitely want an interchangeable lens camera. Last but not least you probably have the most recognizable of the interchangeable lens camera bodies which is the SLR style. Just like the rangefinder style cameras these also have physical dials for shutter speed and ISO on top. These camera bodies do have a bit of a deeper grip and they also have the notch on top in contrast to the rangefinder style cameras. So for these camera bodies the beginner line would be the X-T30 and X-T30 Mark II and the Pro lines are the X-T3, X-T4 and the newly released X-T5. So to tell you how I landed on the X-T4 I first have to tell you what I was looking for originally in my camera body of choice. So I was mostly drawn to Fujifilm cameras because of their resemblance to old school film cameras. I have never shot film, probably never will, but that styling was just very appealing to me just like with a whole lot of other people turning to Fujifilm. Fujifilm. As you can probably guess, therefore the Fujifilm XH and XS line were kind of a no-brainer to me because of their modern approach with the PSM dial and that was just not what I was looking for in a Fujifilm camera. Secondly, I was looking for a weather-resistant camera and that's not because I go out in the pouring rain all the time or that's not even the condition I'm really looking for. I just don't really want to be inconvenienced by rain when I'm already out shooting. And therefore the entry-level lines like the XS line, XE line and XT double digits like XT30 line also didn't fit my purpose. So that really only leaves the X-Pro and the XT line to choose from and I really like both styles but as my main focus in photography is landscape with a bit of travel and street photography on the side just felt a bit more confident with the XT line and as I shoot a bit of video here I felt a bit more confident with the XT line because I think the X-Pro line is really only meant for photography also due to its inwards facing screen that you can just tilt down. So the choice was between the X-T3 and the X-T4 because as I mentioned 
an earlier bought it in 2021 and the X-T5 wasn't released yet. And these two cameras are actually very similar to the point that a lot of people actually argue that the X-T4 shouldn't be called X-T4 but X-T3 Mark II. So the most notable changes from the X-T3 to the T4 were that they changed the layout a bit so it's easier to switch from photography mode to video mode and not mess with all your settings. They also added in-body image stabilization as well as adding a way bigger battery. Lastly, but probably most important for my use case is that they switched the screen from a three-way tilting screen to a fully articulating screen so I can just flip it open and as I shoot YouTube videos just like right now I can look at myself see if I'm off center or if I'm even in focus and on the X-T3 I would need to get up all the time to check for that so it's just a bit easier for my case though I have to mention that I actually prefer the three-way tilting screen if I'd only be doing photography but that's not the case. So over the last two years Fujifilm has actually released a bunch of new camera bodies. I think all of them with uh, hugely improved autofocus and mostly with a new sensor with a higher megapixel count. So firstly there's the X-H2S with still the same megapixel count of 26 just like Max T4. Though there is a new sensor in there and that's a stacked sensor so the readout speed of the camera is way quicker which is great improvement for sports photographers. Then there is the X-H2 and the X-T5 both with a new camera sensor with 40 megapixels and that's great if you want to crop in a bit more because if I do that on my camera with 26 megapixels and I overdo it a bit I can really ruin an image due to the lost resolution there. All three of these cameras have hugely improved autofocus so it can not just detect faces though way better on the previous cameras but can also detect animals, vehicles and lots more. There are also a couple of great new video features with the X-H2 and the X-H2S. They both have 8K video now and 4K 120 frames per second and the X-T4 now has the ability to shoot 6K video. So the question remains, why did I stick with the X-T4 and didn't upgrade to any of the new cameras? It's actually pretty simple though very tempting the 40 megapixels on the X-T5 but just didn't really seem worth to me selling my X-T4 and probably paying a premium of 800 euros just to upgrade to the X-T5 and then also losing the flippy screen for my videos because the X-T5 actually went back to the three-way tilting screen. And for the X-H line, as mentioned earlier, it's just not the camera body for me. I just don't really like the styling. A lot of people like it, it's just not why I went with Fujifilm, so that was also a no-brainer why I didn't upgrade to those. Anyway, even after two years, I'm really happy with the X-T4 and for the foreseeable future, I will definitely stick with it. Though I might add another camera body at some point because I really like the styling of the X-E and the X-Pro line, but that's just something for the future, I guess. Anyway, if you want to know why I didn't pursue full frame in the first place but chose Fujifilm, check out this video.